everybody. Um, we'll have our panel come up. And I'll introduce you. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of uh, Gilles Babinet. Let's hear it for Gilles Babinet. Let's hear it for this guy. And uh, next up, Elizabeth Varley from Tech Hub in London. And yeah, please clap. And uh, last but not least, Alexander Jung from uh, SoundCloud startup in Berlin. Um, Thank you for attending this session. So what we're going to be talking about here really is about the process of creating either engineering uh, startup clusters or how they come about uh, organically. Um, and if, if you guys want to pick up your mic so you can uh, talk. Um, I'm going to turn briefly, first of all, to Alexander. So um, you're actually originally Swedish. Yep. Um, but um, you chose to do your startup in Berlin. Yep. And there's the interesting sort of story behind that, isn't it? Um, uh, and what, we're going to have a little bit of a face-off between cities, everybody here, because we have Ooh. we kind of have Berlin represented, we have London, and we have Paris. So we're it's kind of we're going to see if we can can't make these people fight a little bit for their cities. I know cities. which one is the best one. So oh yes, well you think that you think you know you, you know, but. But why did, why did you choose Berlin, first of all, sir? sir? So, so we had, um, uh, it was actually, in the end, it was a very spontaneous decision. Um, my co-founder, Eric, and I, we were, um, we'd, we'd gotten back to, so the slightly longer version is, we'd gotten back to Stockholm after a few months in San Francisco, where we were writing this book, and we, we were starting to get into the thoughts of, of starting SoundCloud. And, talking a little bit about, you know, should we stay in Stockholm? Should we maybe go back to San Francisco and do it from there? And we quite early decided that, you know, we wanted this to, um, to stay in Europe. Uh, we felt that Europe would be the right biz for, um, for our thoughts about, uh, about SoundCloud. And, but we'd already then be discussing, like, moving around somewhere for a little bit. So what we actually did was we, we went on a small tour of Europe. I think we went to London, Barcelona, Vienna, and the last stop was Berlin. Um, and I don't think I'd been to Berlin before that. Eric, my co-founder, had lived there for a couple of months before. But we were there for one day, and you know, we got back to Stockholm in the evening, and we were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're moving to Berlin next week. So we quickly just kind of wrapped up all of our things and moved over to Berlin. Um, this so was in the beginning of summer, um, a little bit sort of on chance and feeling that, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll just, we'll move somewhere else and see how that works. Um, but, but I think, you know, you can come up with a lot of smart reasons um, afterwards for like why we actually made that move. But to be totally honest, like we weren't, we didn't have any smart reasons at the time. It was a completely like spontaneous decision that came from that one day of visiting. But and yeah. it was really, so I think what, what, what they came from, like why it was so easy for us to choose that was, you know, after just one day in Berlin, like we really, we really felt, you know, the creativity of the city, and we felt this sort of this kind of punk culture of wanting to do things differently, and that was something we were really attracted to. We also knew that there was a heavy tech community, so that intersection of creativity and arts—that's sort of what we, what this we were This is sort of to. where I want to want to get with this because, for heaven, you know, people can start up anywhere they like, really. But the question is, the question is, is where do you draw developers? Where do you? where do you draw people from to create that tech community? And yeah. uh, to bring in Elizabeth, um, uh, by the way, I quickly need to declare an interest in that I've helped in the initial first initial phase of, of the creation of the, the project she's working on called Tech Hub, but I'm, I'm now going to take the devil's advocate position on the panel and, uh, and uh, try and uh, ask some hard questions. But you uh, uh, obviously saw the potential of your tech hub project, which you probably need to explain, um, in London, in a particular part of London, and so uh, and, the, and there was, I'm um, obviously there was a lot of technology people there. Yeah. So. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Tech Hub is a community and workspace uh, for technology entrepreneurs. Uh, we opened first in London about 18 months ago, and we're opening uh, in a load of different places around the world. We've just uh, announced Riga and Prague, uh, and there'll be some more announcements next year. Um, and so for us, London made sense because there, um, we felt that there wasn't a, a focal point for the tech industry there, um, but that there was a 
a significant tech industry there, particularly clustered around um, uh, Old Street roundabout in East London, and uh, where where these guys uh, now have an office. Yep. Um, and it was really uh, just that that organic creation of a technology cluster that was really important. There, I mean, people talk about all the different factors for that happening, um, and cheap rent at the time was was one of them. But it's one of those things that once you have uh, a group of people doing something in a particular area, then more people join and more people join, and it it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, which um, which is actually really helpful. But uh, in what Alex was saying about um, that intersection of creativity and arts and technology, we also see that in London. And I think that's really important as well. Having lots of like-minded people around uh, is great, but you also want those other things too. Um, but you know, we, we don't necessarily uh, have tech companies drawing all their developers from London. They, London is a great place um, to be based and being able to draw lots of different talent from lots of different places. The physical location of your business is becoming less and less important, which is one of the reasons why Tech Hub is opening um, international uh, locations as a network, because accessing people in different places who can help you uh, is as important as accessing all the people physically around you who can help. Okay, so let me, at this point, let me bring you in, Gilles, because... Um uh, you fam uh, famously created uh, MPX4 in uh, in France, uh, didn't you? And um, and uh, you chose to do that. So you had the option. You could have you could have moved to San Francisco or whatever. So why did you make that decision to do to the startup here? I mean, yeah, it's difficult to say that I. Yeah, for MXP4, we took the decision to stay in France, and for a few others of my startups, uh, there were the rationale that uh, at some point we may move or not, and uh, we so far decided to stay in Paris. I'd say that, you know, to, to tell you the truth, it, it depends where we stand. This morning I was with uh, Guillaume de, de Cugis, um, who um, is the CEO of uh, Scoop It, and he moved uh, in the Valais, and he told me it doesn't really make sense to move over there. It, it makes sense if you are in certain area, uh, which are software and uh, social media. You know, so I believe that um, cities, uh, I would say Berlin to me, it's, much, it's probably more tied to things relating to art. You know, everything, project with content or art BS are probably uh, more relevant over there. And, um, and Paris is uh, a good hub because it's, it's uh, probably more, I would say it, it's, it, it may sound rather strange to some, but uh, scientific uh, oriented, you know, we are very good in math, for instance. Uh, I would say a company like Criteo makes sense to, us, uh, to have its R&D in Paris, you know, because they, they have a huge uh, number of people who are uh, scientific and um, the reason for them to stay in Paris is probably extremely uh, rational. I see, but you, you're also uh, now working with the French government, uh, correct, on uh, to try and foster, sure. foster so, this uh, community, uh, the tech community. I can make you the whole pitch if you want. <laughs> the Give us the skinny pitch. version. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, to, to get a good uh, ecosystem of startups, you need to have several things. Uh, you need to have a cool city, probably. It's important. I mean, to me, I prefer to be uh, a cool city. A number cool one. city, rather in Paris than in uh, Valenciennes, you know, a north city, which uh, uh, is not really uh, appealing. Um, it's important to have a good um, taxation system. Uh, France uh, changed a lot over the past three, four years. Uh, you have huge discount on hiring people and it makes an enormous difference at the end of the day on the bottom line. Uh, I think that something where we're not, we're getting there, but we're not really good at is uh, the partnershiping, partnershiping between university and startups. It's something which obviously work well in Israel and in um, California. Uh, and we're trying to change that so that for each startup there is a partnership with the university. Um, and you need to have a few other things. 
probably uh, a good um, access to uh, workforce. You know, and uh, we're good at it, but uh, we feel that if we had more university actually um, training people to be uh, like startup oriented and to have some specific knowledge into the computer field, it would be better. But actually, it's, it's interesting. You know, I had a, a lunch with the, the Minister Besson and many entrepreneurs, half French, half uh, foreigners. And we asked some of them to, to, to make a testimony about uh, how the failed friend was. And most of them said it has changed a lot uh, for the better recently. So, um, so in some, in some respects, um, uh, there's quite a lot of heat and, heat and uh, discussion in the press at the right now about uh, clusters in London, Silicon Roundabout, they call it, as opposed to Silicon Valley. Uh, in Berlin, there's been quite a lot of uh, press, um, TV people turning up. Um, and in a way, you know, it's kind of unfair to put, compare Berlin to lots of other cities in Europe because it's, it's still very much kind of a new city in, in a way, you know, because it's obviously because of the, the, its history. But, um, I mean, could you guys um, give us some feedback on whether or not you can actually create a startup cluster? You know, can you kind of physically create it? Because, um, for instance, in, in the UK, there's a project uh, created by the UK government called Tech City uh, to try and foster uh, what is effectively an already existing community there. I mean, I, I'm assuming that you would agree with, with, with that. But, I mean, does anybody actually think that that's possible, that good governments can, can actually help tech clusters create, be created? I think it's possible, um, but uh, I think it's possible but difficult because part of uh, like what you were saying, Alex, about um, you know the punk culture, people who want to do things differently. I think one of the reasons um, that uh, the startup cluster has worked uh, where it has in London is that the areas are full of artists and independent uh, restaurateurs and shop owners and uh, and startups. And all those people have something in common, which is wanting to do things their own way, wanting to do things differently. And so I think governments have a real challenge uh, because as soon as something is government sanctioned, it becomes less sexy. It becomes. It's basically like your father walking into the party. To <laughs> well, I think. Hi, Dad. Poten potentially, and uh, being able to to help and do something um, to to really uh, help companies flourish without having that effect is really challenging. It's but really I, challenging. But I'm not really getting, getting the impression that uh, the Berlin government is particularly doing anything to foster startups in Berlin, and yet it seems to be happening on, on its own steam. Yeah, I would, I would say that they're not doing much. I would also say that, you know, part of, that, part of the blame is on, on us. We haven't reached out and said, hey, look at this amazing thing that's happening in Berlin. Like, it's really becoming the place on the startup map, you know, that people are looking at. So, you know, we could be doing a better job at that. But I think, you know, to, to, to your point, I think that there's, there's definitely a role for for government and for policy in creating you know, a whole ecosystem and the whole hub. But I don't believe so much in focusing, on, focusing it on the early stage companies because people, the, the people that build great companies don't start them because the tax situation is good there. Like, you know, you just don't think about that kind of thing. You're starting it from a different, a, a different point and yet a different kind of passion. So, you know, it becomes, once you've scaled up and you've grown, it becomes a lot more significant. You actually have the resource to think about, you know, how, you know, how the, the employment law is structured here. How does taxation work? Like, how does that, that affect us as a larger company? And, and the government has, a, has a, a huge responsibility there to make sure that the companies feel that they are in an attractive location because the startups that do get bigger are going to be the ones that then support the new uh, the new companies coming into the ecosystem. So I don't believe like the government is ever going to going to be able to come in and do like you know the startup initiative in Berlin and all of a sudden like my friends that aren't doing startups that will flip them into like hey I want to start this company now. The thing that they are attracted to is is you know the 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 passion that they see within the startups that are being built now. They see this this you know the, this this big, like, vibrant part of the city, which is, which is in Berlin, it's not just about the startup scene. Like, you know, it's an ongoing joke in Sweden. Like, if you start a band, it's like the first question is like, okay, well, so when are you moving to Berlin? Um, it's like art. That's the joke in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, but 
by judging how many like Danish people and and you know Dutch people and uh, English. All, people all the are, bands in in Berlin are Swedes, are they? <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's the thing. Like it's for, it's from all over the all over the place. But it's like Berlin has become such a magnet for you know uh, for musicians, for uh, for artists, for for the different people who you know do things differently. Well, by basically. that definition, then taking that idea, Paris should be. Startup Central, because I mean, what a long history of fashion, art, etc., culture. Um, you know, so, you have a lot of startup about content your though in Paris. You know, for instance, uh, Deezer and Delimation are content startups. I think your microphone is not working quite well. Is it? I mean, it's uh, yeah, sure. We we got a lot of startup dealing with content. It's probably less trendy than could be Berlin regarding arts. You know, arts is a little bit different than content to me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, still, to come back to your question, whether government can set up some clusters, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting one, and I think you, you mostly answered it, that it. I would say that it's mostly a problem of general policy, of the way you structure the tax system and so on. But to gather some startup in a physical place uh, is pretty challenging because you would need to buy some real estate and so on. And I would say the more you would put some government, the less it would look like uh, startup oriented. You know, so that's uh, it, it's more it's probably more something which uh, deals with uh, cities. Uh, Paris has some interesting program, and it's more about going along, not doing it. You know, it's for instance, I think about Cap Digital, which is a kind of what you could call a, it's not really a cluster, it's a kind of a system that helps startup to understand uh, where could be their partners and where they could locate. Uh, government can probably do things in like, for instance, putting the, the fiber. If you don't have, a, you know, le, for instance, Le Sentier in Paris is the place where you have probably the most startup in France. And until sorry, where, where is that again, sorry? Le Sentier. Right. Le Sentier. It's in the center of Paris, uh, the second district mostly. Uh, and until very recently, you didn't have fiber. So it was quite of weird. And that's something which probably wasn't seen by the government until uh, they got a lot of complaint, which went through the CNN. I see. So that's quite interesting. So actually, to some extent, maybe we can just put the down the creation of startup clusters to broad where the where the fastest broadband is i think that's a, it's a brilliant point i mean like it, it is a real it's honestly a great point and sweden is a very connected country moving from sweden to berlin like you know it was it was quite a surprise like i mean and this is a true story our first office deutsche telecom came and installed our internet by cutting a hole in the window on the fourth floor of a building and pulling a cable, uh, a copper cable wire out that window down the building. And then we lost our internet a couple of weeks later because the rats in the basement just chewed through that, that thing. So, you know, Berlin is great in many ways, but like infrastructure, like great fiber, like great broadband, like that just isn't there. Like it's, 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 it's good enough, but, but nowhere near what it should be. So. You know, anything that would put that in place would be tremendously, tremendously To some valuable. extent, is it just about making, kind of like you just want governments to make the trains run on time and you want governments to put in the good broadband and then leave the entrepreneurs to do their work, is that, would you say? It, it would make it, it would definitely make it easier. Um, I mean, one of the things that we offer at Tech Hub is we had to put in our own fiber line to get 100 megabits per second. And so that solves the problem for the people who are based with us, but it's those who are outside of that um, you know, what, what can they do? And we're working on some projects to, to try and do something about that in our local area because we feel like the, the big companies just take too long to move and it's not in their business model to make it more uh, quickly accessible and not have a long contract and that sort of thing. But, I mean, the, yes, good broadband is really important, but great startups start regardless. They, you know, the, one thing about entrepreneurs is that they're so... Um, you know, they're so creative, they're, you know, they're, they're problem solvers. They'll come up with a workaround, even if it's, you know, hanging yeah. something out, out a window. Um, but in terms of what you're saying, Mike, um, I think the government can, yeah, create that environment which is useful for startups, but also, as Alex was saying, for growth. I think too many governments um, focus on startups, startups, startups. We've got to have everyone in the country starting businesses. 
it's not necessarily suitable or, or in their nature for everybody in the country to, to be starting businesses. What would be really great is if they focus on how can we help the real little companies get to that next stage and that might be cutting the cost of employment, cutting the cost of taxation. Um, they're the things that governments can really help with. And also, so I mean, just thinking about it now, but there's also there's a massive area where government could be doing in all in all of our countries a way better job than it is today. If if we want startup clusters, if we want like you know, if we all believe that startups are key to sort of the next generation of the economy, then they should be talking about it. Like we still like compared to you know what entrepreneurs are doing, like politicians and. Uh, like in, in sort of high positions in office, don't talk enough about sort of what is the actual, why is it inspiring to be an entrepreneur? Why is it cool to start a company, fail miserably, start another one, fail miserably again, start a third one, and then be massively successful and employ 3,000 people? Like that, that message of it being, you know, something really, really admirable, especially like that it's, um, it's admirable to fail with a company, that I haven't heard like from from politicians in a. In well, a long I, time. I think that politicians tend not to want to be associated with failure, do they? They and sends the wrong sends the wrong signals to the media. Which to is some crazy. Extent. Failure is awesome. But uh, but yeah, I mean, well, chill. No, for, you know, I don't want to be the guy who uh, just uh, say uh, Nicola Sarkozy said it or that. But to this extent, I have to say that for those who were at the Elysee Palace yesterday. I was really surprised to hear the president say, uh, we need to learn to fail, you know? And yeah. from, from him, from someone who is very, uh, who has been part of the system, like most of the politicians in France, it, to me, it was like a shock. He said, one of the key elements of the startup um, ecosystem, of the startup culture, is uh, the, the accept, acceptance of failure. You know, and I think it was brilliant because I've been advocating the notion of failure. You know, I was uh, part of the first uh, Felcon in Paris and pushing very much for that. We accept that we can fail. And actually what you said is just brilliant in the sense that startup goes along with failure. And, and the French, you know, who, has some, who are sometimes a little bit pretentious, you, you know that, especially the people who come from abroad, uh, have a problem with that, you know? We definitely need to accept that uh, we're not so much better, we're just a little bit better than the other, you know? And uh, it was a joke as for those who didn't get it. Um, and, and I think that from uh, the mouth of the president, it's, it's a good signal. Um, we're gonna, uh, if, you, if anybody has any questions or points or they'd like to uh, advertise their own city at some point, then then I'll, uh, I'll bring you in in a moment. But um, uh, I'm not sure, is this, this should, should be working, but um, what about, uh, jog I mean, is there really real kind of, there must be sort of real value to clustering. So for instance, uh, I, know, I know personally that uh, one of the biggest meetups of developers in, in London ha started happening in East London, and that's kind of why, partly why the companies turned up there, is because the, all the, the developers were sort of living there and also, doing meetups in, in bars and uh, talking about code and stuff like that. I mean, uh, in, in a way, it doesn't that, that's kind of the, the slightly different thing about uh, the next generation of startups that have happened in the last five years, is that because they are so intensely associated with developers, uh, in, very different to say 10 years ago when really you would hire a bunch of like IT contractors and you know, buy lots of servers and you know, pack a room full of servers and, and that kind of thing. But now it's all about code, it's about development, it's about minimal viable product and working up uh, a product. Uh, in, so the developers and the engineers really, to some extent, are the kind of why startups seem to cluster in the first place, would you say? Why we got Soma, the Soma district in, in uh, San Francisco because it was kind of cheap to live there and cheap to code, I mean, you, you know, code on ramen noodles and all of that. I mean, what's, what's, our, what's the views of, of you guys about, about the engineer side of it and the talent side? I mean, I, I think we've, there's, been, there's two things that we've, we've noticed, and, and I totally agree. Like, I mean, 
that's like the engineers, that's, it's such a key part of, of building a, any startup. I mean, they are the rock stars. Um, and they are the magicians that can take anything, a clean slate of, of you know, paper and like create magic out of it. It's, it's, really, it's really fantastic and super like, insane amounts of respect for it. Um, what we've seen like in, in Berlin, I think is like two things. One is, is the more long-term thing of there being a lot of uh, universities, technical universities there. So there's a good sort of foundation of, of technical knowledge. Um, that, that sort of goes, goes so far. Um, the second thing that we've, we've been able to draw on is, again, the same thing, that Berlin is a really cool city with a lot of like fun counterculture kind of things happening. And it, tend, it seems like that is also something which is fairly common for a lot of developers to, to be into that mindset as well. So not only have we already hired a lot of people who were developers who had moved to Berlin beforehand, but we put a lot of effort into hiring globally and bringing people to Berlin. So out of, I think we're about 80 people, about 20 different nationalities. Um, almost all of our engineering operations team is from Silicon Valley that we've moved over to Berlin. Um, and, you know, that thing of like the, the, the developers are attracted by more than, a, you know, a, a, a passionate product project with, you know, the, the, the most exciting new technologies, like they also want this cool environment where, um, uh, where they can spend time as well. And I mean, that's what you see like in, in, in Soma or previously maybe in, 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 in the mission in San Francisco as well, that, um, you know, that environment becomes like a selling point for, for engineers as well. All right. Yeah, we, we see that in London as well. I mean, the, the street art movement there, the artists, uh, places like the London hack space where yeah. you can, it's just this, you know, place filled with loads of stuff that you can just mess around with. Um, places like that are where, where great developers and people that want to fiddle around with things and see if they can make them work. And it's, it's almost like, you know, hacking is becoming part of like urban culture somehow. And it is like, it is, I mean, maybe I'm, you know, a bit weird, but, but like, it's cool, right? It's like, it's super, super cool. Like for people, they ride around on like fixed but, gear bikes um, and but, but, cool but, stuff. But the thing is that they, and it's, and to refer back to our, our sort of analogy about how government's trying to make this sort of work is a bit like your dad turning up at the party. The, uh, I mean, in a way, I mean, governments do have a role here and we are in very, very difficult economic times now. Uh, the world is turning bad in, economically and has turned very bad and governments actually are doubling down on entrepreneurs to try and make them part of an, an engine of the economy. I mean, David Cameron in the UK hosted, has hosted various sort of technology events. Uh, in Dublin, the uh, president and the prime minister have been uh, wooing uh, startups um, all over Europe to some extent, and Sarkozy as well, last night. So, so the question is they must have some kind of a role to actually make the economies better. So, but how can they do that? Can they, can they tell the universities to you know, hit the students over the head and try and, you know, get cool, start hacking, you know, or should they um, change the education system somehow? What do you think? So that's a long story and uh, I could spend uh, more than the time we have to, to, to tell you about that, but uh, governments have a huge role there, you know, I mean, we startupers are mostly, I would say, happy when the government is far away, but we have to admit that training people, making sure that we have the best university is, uh, is works, you know? And something we didn't have so far in France is we have a very poor university. So the government created what they call the Grand Emprunt, and they're gonna pour like 20 billion into the uh, education system, which is obviously a huge amount of money. And the rationale there is to say, either we return to uh, a landfill, you know, or we get into this new economy. So, and to do that, we need to reform the system so they change the laws. They made what we call the Pécresse law, which gives a lot of autonomy to the university. And that's the first thing they can do. The second thing they can do is to make sure that there is a consistent financing system, you know, from seed money until um, development uh, fund. So that's, that's something uh, we're working on. I mean, when I said we, uh, the, the CNN just made a lot of recommendations to the government about the way to use this funding. 
uh, because uh, they have decided to put 4.5 uh, billion into uh, this, uh, um, actually into the new economy, two out of which are directly for the financing of the system. And I think that the third thing, to, to come back to your notion of a cluster, uh, which uh, has to become part of our culture, referring to what you just said, is to make sure that the well-educated people mix with the hackers, or in other words, that entrepreneur can, can meet the one, the talent they need to develop their ID. And I think that's probably the most important. And when you refer to the notion of cluster, to me, cluster should be that and nothing else. It, it's to make sure that you have the critical size of people to make, to, to make that there, there are connections between talents. That's, to me, the goal. I Go think just, just one important um, point to make there, you were talking about you know, well-educated people getting together with hackers and that sort of thing. Uh, to me, also, the, the important thing is not... Uh, to make it just for well-educated people and, and, you know, I mean, we're, we're all white middle class, you know, there are a lot of other people out there who are not like us and the technological revolution shouldn't be uh, excluding those people. We should be saying that if you're a good problem solver, if you are creative, if you can come up with ideas, even if you don't have a great education, there is a place for you in starting your own thing, in joining a startup, in learning how to do stuff. And I think that that's really important. And I think that's uh, has a, you know, government has a place in, in getting involved in that and moving okay, that forward. Okay, well, we've got to do some Q&A. And I think there's a question there. I don't think, I'm not sure if there's any microphones floating around. Uh, uh, microphones floating around, guys? Um, we can get, you can use this one for you quickly. Go. Hi, I'm Ramon from Brussels and I'm also part of the community that is trying to create a tech hub there. And I think that the most important part of creating a tech hub is some, a group of individuals that are going to get the ball rolling. Once the ball gets rolling, there's a lot of other people that are going to see that it's possible and that are going to join in and they're going to make it go faster. So I would just want you all to invite you all to join the Belgian uh, web mission guys that are here. It's a bunch of entrepreneurs that just decided to get together, come here to the web and try to do something together to promote their startups. Can you give this guy a mic, the microphone? Uh, just to take, pick you up on that point, that you guys, um, that wasn't necessarily um, something that, that, you didn't get the government to, to do that, you did it yourselves, right? Yeah. You, you asked the government for some help, financial? Yeah. The only thing I would say is that I really, I'm, I, I, I would say, uh, uh, I'm sure it must be pretty tough because you, you guys haven't had much of a government in Belgium for ages, have you? I mean, you know, there hasn't really been a government. But the regional government, yeah. Yeah. I think that you, you may, you're making a very good point. Um, in the UK, and I have to admit, they, they made a very good law. You have a, a tax discount uh, called, I, I don't remember its name, but uh, you, can, you can remove from your tax uh, like up to 500,000 uh, pounds if you invest in startups, which obviously helps a lot to do that. In France, it's... Uh, Unfortunately, it's like 80,000 80, euros. So, but uh, it's something we should definitely push for is to make sure that we have a consistent ecosystem of people like who are entrepreneur, like me, for instance, and who wants to invest in other startup. You know, to encourage this is essential because not only they would bring some money, but also some talents, some knowledge, some skills. Um, we've got a. There's another question there. Can you say who you are, where you're from? Hi, I'm uh, Panagiotis. I'm a blogger for Greece, from Greece. I, you mentioned a lot of times, yeah, no, these jokes. Uh, you mentioned a lot of times the importance of high-level education uh, re and how it is related to startups and the startup culture. In my mind, high-level education is usually about getting a really good structured uh, knowledge and structured way of thinking. Is this an important asset when you're talking about hacking and starting up something new, something uh, that hasn't been done before. Can you, can you teach entrepreneurship? So uh, it's, 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 a, it's a good question, actually, because, I mean, often 
like if, if I look at our office, for instance, and like brilliant developers, we never have a conversation really about, you know, the education we have behind us or anything like that. But so it feels like, oh, that's not really part of it. But actually, when you take a step back and you look at people's backgrounds, like it's pretty, people pretty consistently have maybe not always like a finished degree, but um, they have a certain amount of, of, of university degrees. I think computer science is a very complex uh, topic and you can learn how to hack things together without the, the sort of the, the, the deeper CS background. But once you start getting into more tricky territory, you notice that people that have like a more a, a deeper CS background tend to, tend to um, have a little bit easier with the big challenging pro uh, problems. Um, doesn't mean that it has to be there, but I think like in general, like having having a lot of that education available, like as yeah. a government trying to make that available, trying to make it attractive by connecting it to yeah. the meaning, actually will will help startups um, hire developers We've, as well. Uh, okay, let's get another question there. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, my name's Tony. I'm from London originally, but I'm studying for an MBA in Barcelona at the moment. And one of the things I'm I'm discovering in Spain is. The, the structure for investors um, or the incentives for investors and the way they look at things is quite different from what you see in Silicon Valley. And I was just wondering, do you think that if you start creating a hub, the Silicon Valley mentality of investors will come to that hub? Or is it something that needs to be there quite early on to help the, help the companies grow? Can you, can you encourage investors by clustering and creating hubs? Well, something that we've seen uh, so far, actually, with, um, with Tech Up in London is we're getting approached by US angels and, uh, and VCs saying, hey, it seems like there's stuff going on in London and in Europe, and we think our money might go further um, if we're investing over here because the valuations on the West Coast right now are pretty crazy. Um, and so, no, so we're reasonable. just... We're they're reasonable. <laughs> Very reasonable. Um, and so whether or not the mentality necessarily uh, comes across, what I think that we're seeing is a sort of more borderless attitude uh, to investment um, as investors are looking for interesting deal flow, real innovations yeah. and that sort of thing. They're looking outside their own local area. Whether they may want to then import those companies to their local area is, is another thing, but they're at least looking outside. There's something I, interesting in that, isn't there? Go. I mean, yeah. Berlin, is, Berlin is a good example of that. Again, like, there is a fantastic ecosystem. Like, I mean, you can argue if it's the best or not. It's not really rel relevant. There's a fantastic startup ecosystem. And there's, there's very, very few, virtually no VCs in Berlin. There's, like, there's no money there at all. There's a couple of, like, government funds and stuff. But, but there's, you know, but um, the U.S. people are coming over a lot more. But it's, like, it's... Pretty much every week, there's the big VCs in London. Occasionally, the U.S. startup, uh, U.S. VCs are throwing like a startup dinner in in Berlin. It's almost like a joke now. It's like, oh, are we going to VC so and so dinner this week? Is it? Because like, so, they're, they're, they're like. But crazy. there's no, in a way, you no, there's no organizing body. Nobody sort of there's no sort of branding in Berlin. It's just that it's happened. You know, you you don't. There's no sort of uh, yeah, tourist no. office for startups in. In no, Berlin. no, it's never been, and I think that's one thing that's been that we've all sort of done a poor job at. Like, it hasn't been very organised at all. It hasn't been, you know, talked about in a consistent way, and and it hasn't been the way that the VCs have come into that is through entrepreneurs. Like, I mean, at some point, I, you know, was getting so many emails from VCs asking, you know, I'm coming over to Berlin. Like, which companies should I talk to? So just went and created like an open, open Google form where all start, startups could sign up. And whenever like the VCs email, I just send them the link to that document and they have like a hundred startups that they can go, go and visit. But, so, but, but in a way, you're acting like the, sort of the tourist officer in a way yourself, aren't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, that's actually um, true. I'm not getting anything you, for you're it. You're not getting so. anything for <laughs> it. You should be charging for this. <laughs> yeah. um, let's <laughs> squeeze a another pic a question in before we close up. Go ahead. Yeah, just a quick one about uh, Tech Hub in London, which has been fantastic. Um, I've been there like a lot over the last year and a half, but I was wondering, is there times that, Liz, you've had to like, refuse people, you know, you, you know, because of the success are there times that you, you need to be really selective about the people that you want to work with or to be in that, 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 that space? 
Well, it, it's a good question. Um, we're we're not an incubator, so we don't uh, we don't look at everyone's business plans before they come in and that sort of thing. Uh, we really try to be as open and inclusive as possible because it's a community thing, not uh, you know not about incubation. We don't want to be accepting people on the basis that we think we might make money from them, you know, by investing in them or something like that. Um, really, for us, we're we're focused on product-oriented technology companies, so we do turn away agents and consultants and that sort of thing and that's really hard because you know some of them are really great and they're you know really cool people um, but they do come to our events and and mix with uh, with the the product startups uh, in that way uh, but really the only other criteria that we apply is um, is you know are you wanting to uh, get something from the community and also c sort of contribute something to the community. It's not just about a cheap desk space, even though that's important. Um, you know, you, you want it to be people wanting to be around others and helping others and that sort of thing. But um, as we get busier, we're just getting bigger. So hopefully we won't have, <laughs> so hopefully we won't have that problem. Well, um, I think we're out of time, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you to, please thank our panel. Thanks very much to Le Web.